the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome as we gather to worship. Our worship this morning is being held on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I wish to acknowledge them as traditional owners, and I'd also like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Our call to worship is based on Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord. With my whole heart I sing your praise. I worship you and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness, for you have made your name and your word great above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You gave me encouragement and you gave me strength deep within my being. Let all the rulers of the earth praise you, O Lord, in response to the words of your mouth, and let them sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, by your grace, you touch our fears. With the fire of your compassion, you touch our brokenness. With the fire of your forgiveness, you touch our hearts with the fire of your love. Jesus Christ, by your grace, you step into our lives and an unpredictable journey begins. You challenge us to new thinking with overflowing results. You so confront our doubts that we can cast out our fears. Holy Spirit, by your grace, you give us eyes to see the emptiness of our world. You give us ears to hear the good news. You give us words to bring hope to all people. God in community, holy in one, by your grace, we are who we are. Your children, your people, your church, praying together as Jesus taught us, saying, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and always. Amen. We sing to God's praise, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
This morning, Luke tells us of an encounter Simon Peter had with Jesus after fishing all night. And although an expert, Peter catches nothing. Jesus calls to him and tells him where to cast his net. Peter again responds instantaneously and they catch a large number of fish, so many that their nets could break. In turn, they call others to help them with the catch that threatens to sink their boats. Peter also claims that he is a sinful man, but Jesus is there to assure and give him a task that he won't be fishing for fish, but for people. We adore God and confess our sin. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. Holy God, we come to declare that you are our creator. Holy God, we come to proclaim your greatness. Holy God, we come to lift your name in the words that we say and in the songs that we sing to you today. We acknowledge you as the Almighty. We acknowledge all that you have blessed us with. We acknowledge that you care for each one of us. We acknowledge that you are our strength when we feel weak. We acknowledge that you know us all individually and you created us uniquely and perfectly. We acknowledge that although you know us inside and out, you still love us eternally. That love was shown so powerfully by sending us your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for all you mean to us and all you have done for us. We thank you that you call each of us by name and that with your disciples of old, we too are called to serve you and your people. We confess that sometimes we know we are not ready to serve. We're too caught up with ourselves and our own selfish desires. We seek your forgiveness. We confess that sometimes we know that we don't have the ability to serve. We're too angry at ourselves for what we have said that we know we shouldn't have or what we have done that we know that we shouldn't have. We seek your forgiveness. We confess that sometimes we know we can't serve you. We're too annoyed at ourselves for what we should have said that we have failed to say or what we should have done that we have failed to do. We seek your forgiveness. Lord, we know that you are slow to anger and abounding in love. So may we rest in that love knowing that we can have a fresh start, that today is the beginning of a new journey with you. So Holy Spirit, encourage us to hear your calling now. Holy Spirit, enable us to teach us to fulfill our calling. Holy Spirit, empower and sustain us in your service. Thank you, Lord God. We are ready to serve. So hear our praise this day. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. The Holy One became holy human so that we might know love. The One enthroned on high endured the cross so that we might have life. Believe this good news, we are forgiven. By God's grace we are who we are, forgiven and restored people. Thanks be to God. And as we prepare to listen for God's word for us today, 
Let us pray. Lord, to come before your presence is to be overwhelmed. We are weak. You are strong. We are filled with conflicts and doubts. You are a sure foundation. Here in church on Sunday, when we pause to consider your great plans for us, your image upon our lives, we also know we fall short, we stumble and we disappoint. We know your forgiveness. Here in church, when your word is open, we feel judged, condemned, charged and guilty. And of course we are. Yet here in church, we're also embraced by your love. You came to us, your light shone into our darkness and we beheld your glory. Do not leave us, Lord. Come, let your light shine. Love us and do not let us go. Open your word to us. Forever we pray. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel, Luke chapter 5, reading from 1 to 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gethsemane and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The wisdom of God, God's word for God's world. Fishing is a noble occupation. For some, it is a sometimes dangerous livelihood. Others find it an exciting sport or a tranquil form of occupation or relaxation. While conversations about the size, the weight or species of fish may go on for hours, including descriptions of that one that got away, the last thing most anglers want to get is advice from amateurs. If that amateur happens to be a minister, it's so much worse. After all, the minister is supposed to know a good deal about things holy, but let's leave practical things to practical people. 
St Luke is perhaps the most careful of all the gospel writers. He set himself out to be a historian. He felt called to let the non-Jewish world know about Jesus, about the birth and early development of the church. Luke has an eye for detail. He's also good at painting pictures in words. Tradition has it that he was an artist as well as a doctor. In the Gospel story we heard today, Luke brings us to the shore of a lake. A crowd has gathered to hear this new itinerant teacher and in its enthusiasm threatens to push the teacher into the water. Two boats stand just out in the water. It's morning. Their crews are washing and cleaning their nets after a long and largely unsuccessful night on the lake. Jesus calls across to one of the fishermen named Simon and he asks permission to come aboard and use his boat as a podium. The big fisherman agrees. One can imagine him grumbling that his work is being interrupted. The nets have to be cleaned and coiled and their partners given time to rest before night arrives again. Nevertheless, Simon consents. The teacher sits down and teaches. Then the teacher gets to meddling. He orders the members of Zebedee and Company fishing experts to throw their newly scoured nets into the lake in broad daylight. One expects to get advice on living virtuous lives from religious instructors. What on earth would a carpenter's son turn preacher know about professional fishing? Simon and his companions were faced with a choice. Did they refuse politely or do as they were asked? If they did as they were asked, they would certainly face the ridicule of all who'd come to know of the incident, a ridicule they would probably share with the teacher. Goodness knows what Zebedee would say to them when he heard the story. Simon, James and John decided to obey the rabbi. Simon wanted the order confirmed though. If you say so, we'll let down the nets. So they pushed their boats out and threw out the nets. And pretty soon the nets were so full that there was a danger that they would break. One can imagine them struggling to bring the nets on board and then to get them to shore. At least they had enough customers to buy the fish in the warmth of the day before the catch spoiled. Simon fell on his knees when he saw their catch. One wonders why. First century Jews did not kneel to worship. Anyway, worship was something due to God and there's not a hint that Simon at this stage had any awareness that Jesus was any more than a master or a religious teacher. Perhaps Simon was so agitated by the phenomenon and perhaps very embarrassed that he may have misjudged the young teacher that his legs just gave way under him. Simon saying that he is sinful, ask Jesus to go away. Instead of referring to Jesus as Master, Simon now calls him Lord. In other words, Peter is feeling that smallness we often experience when we are suddenly confronted with someone or something that fills us with awe and amazement. 
It's not that Simon necessarily felt sinful in the sense that he thought himself to be a naughty or wretched person. Rather, Simon felt small and inadequate. Even his professional judgment as a fisherman now seemed faulty. Did Simon think that Jesus had performed a supernatural miracle? We don't know. It would be enough that the carpenter's son from inland predicted something Simon and his partners would never have imagined. The rabbi had invaded their space and known more than they did. Perhaps it was the sheer wonder of the teacher's goodness that hit Simon so forcibly. Jesus then told Simon, Peter would be his later nickname, James and John, that they would now catch men. The Greek word here for catch means something like continually catch alive. And it's this point in the story that we might begin to feel uncomfortable. It all sounds suspiciously like evangelism. Jesus tells his new followers that they would hook others in the same way that Jesus had just caught them. There's a very simple point to be made here. If the disciples hadn't become a ministry of catching people alive, we would not be in church here this morning. If we look again at how Jesus converted Peter, James and John, we might get some fresh insight into evangelism. The thing that astounded Simon Peter was that Jesus talked about real life things. The miracle of the fish catch isn't religious at all, at least in the way we usually use that term. What Jesus did was practical and down to earth. Three tired and disheartened people that toiled all night and caught nothing were suddenly turned into three astounded and happy men. Jesus' generosity had invaded their space. They would never be the same again. We are called to be a people who have experienced that transforming generosity and love as Jesus has invaded our space and affected our day-to-day lives. There's been a moment, perhaps a whole lot of moments, when God in Jesus has touched us, even in the parts of our lives we have foolishly thought to be nothing to do with religion. Often others have been the agents. A word spoken in kindness, a piece of advice, an example of suffering in adversity, a touch or a hug melted our hearts, made us feel unworthy and changed our direction and our outlook. Saving people can be as simple as saving them from loneliness, isolation or depression. When we say our thanksgiving, Jesus smiles back. He often seems to be saying, you didn't know I could do that, did you? Then he asks us to show our thankfulness not only on our lips, but in our lives by giving ourselves to God's service. Zebedee's fishing company began with three employees. It has grown to be a multinational reality. We all work with Simon Peter, James and John now. To the glory of God. Amen. And we affirm our faith. God is with us. We are not alone. We live in God's world, we believe in God who has created and is creating 
who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of truth and justice, you have called us to serve. We come with hearts for you and your people. We do not come to judge. We do not come to distrust. We don't come to punish. We don't come to disregard. We come to love as you first loved us. We come to care and treat people as equal. We come with your love in our hearts as we offer to you the most vulnerable and fragile in our communities and in our world. O Lord, hear our cries and draw near to all people who are in pain mentally or physically around our world. Lord, in the midst of fear and isolation, we pray for assurance and company. Lord, in the midst of confusion and pain, we pray for clarity and comfort. Lord, in the midst of grief and darkness, we pray for peace and light. Bring strength to the weak. Bring rest to the weary. Bring healing to the broken. Bring aid to the needy. Bring courage to the lost. And set the prisoner free, we ask. Hear these our prayers for your people in our community and in our world today. Through Christ our Saviour, our Friend and Lord. Amen. Let us sing, God Gives Us a Future. Go with the love of God. Go with the heart for all people. Go strengthened in God. Go serving God's people. Bless our coming and going. Bless our sending and receiving. 
bless our opening and closing and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Jesus and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the living God. In the name of Christ. Amen.